All right, guys, welcome back to Valorant News. Big updates today in the Valorant world. Not just G2 making a miracle at loser's bracket run all the way to the grand finals of the VCT Challengers face of event that's still ongoing and the final is coming up tonight, but also Sentinels potentially making an absurd change according to a Brazilian leaker. And Zekin even potentially reveals that Pancada could be on his way out of the roster. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Kind of interesting story to start off with here with Patafan changing his name officially to just Pat. So, you know, big update, of course. This is actual big update, though, from Binds, which is returning shortly to the competitive queue. These are all the changes that are being made, and I actually really like these changes, what they're trying to do here with Binds, which are in large part trying to make part of it more attacker-sided, certainly over towards the A site. But they've also given some kind of additional resources for the CTs, for the defenders. So they're changing the location of the teleporter, which is now here, so you guys can see um, the teleporter is now right next to the entrance to the showers here, basically, which does mean that if you do teleport from B over to A, the rotation in there is much quicker. So the teleporter has now been moved. That's one side of things. The other part is this door into showers has been widened quite significantly. So um, you can see how much wider it is on the newer version, which is here than the previous version. And it's the same story actually um, going onto the site itself where this has now been widened. So this makes it slightly less of a choke point, allows, um, you know, the, the attacker to get out the door slightly easier than before. Now, one change that has been made is this additional barrel over towards the backside of the site, which initially seems like it doesn't make any sense, but we'll see in a second why this has actually been added into the game. There's also this wall at the back here, which has now been flattened a bit more, gives less options for the attackers if they can get up into that corner, but also gives less places to stand, I guess, for the defenders while they're trying to defend the site. Now, this is a big change actually to the boxes. So this kind of box here at the top, they've moved it down to the bottom and created this new design, which should make it easier to plant, give slightly more options for the attackers. But I believe what it means is, you see that barrel here, which is on the right-hand side of the screen, you probably can see over this box now into short. So it gives a new angle to potentially be played by the defenders, but it does give more options for the attackers when coming to plant the spike. So I think in general, I like these changes. Makes it easier for the attackers to get out on A. Does give some alterations for the CTs and how they can play. So generally, attacker-sided changes changes on the A site, but they've made a couple of defender-sided changes for the B site. So um, this doorway has now been again widened. Of course, this is a doorway that really it's the defenders that are wanted to come through when they retake the site. So that should make that marginally easier. The other big one, though, is on this part of the map. They've added a vent over to this building where you can see that during this hallway before, there was nothing you could do than go outside. Now they've added this vent into play where I'm guessing you can throw utility through would be my understanding. So my my guess is that when you're trying to retake the site as a defender, there's now certain utility you can throw through this vent, which helps that to become slightly easier. So I do like the direction they're going with these changes, and that's pretty much it. So A site has probably become slightly more attacker central. B site has given the, the defenders some extra recourse to retake the bomb site. And I like what they've done here in general, right, with some of these changes around the site. So, um, you know, Bind is going to come back in shortly with these changes, and it is going to replace one map. Which map is it going to be? Definitely intrigued to hear your thoughts. I know some people want Icebox gone, but, um, you know, they just had that partnership with Heineken, right? So I don't imagine they want to do that for Icebox, which is um, always an interesting dynamic here. So yeah, what map's gone? I mean, obviously Split just came back in, Pearl, Lotus, all relatively new. Maybe we're going to get the removal of either Ascent or Haven, or they're going to work on something new for those maps going forward. Enjoy to your thoughts in the comments below. A couple of quick things on Rostermania. Firstly, Ethos confirmed to be joining NRG Valorant as their sixth man. We saw a couple of weeks ago that they decided to make this move. Thrifo was gone, and Ethos is now going to be part of their roster at the very least. There was also some potential changes over at a Global Esports with SK Rossi saying bittersweet news but at least we're back home with a family back to our roots and um, Aaron says it was fun while it lasted. So I don't know if there's serious changes going on in the GE camp there were some rumours that these guys were just messing around but I guess stay tuned for that one because lots of potential talk on Roster Mania especially in the Sentinels camp. So Zekin tweets out saying that Zekin playing with 10s and having a good time but Noyan tweeted this out. Now Noyan it was um, involved initially in the leaks when Pancada and Sassy were going to join Sentinels. He was part of um, the team that actually leaked that initially. And he also mentioned recently that Pancada was spotted playing on the Sentinel role, which potentially implied role changes or personnel changes coming to the primary Sentinels lineup. Now, um, you know, Noyan says, my friend, what a bomb. Watch out for the Sentinels game on Saturday. So, um, you know, they play the first game on Saturday, just tomorrow, up against 100 Thieves. And, um, 
you know, we don't exactly know what he's referring to here, but um, he does go on to say this. One thing I can guarantee, Sentinels is the org of the meme and the content. You will see the absurdity they made. Which, um, I mean, you read this, it sounds like he is not particularly happy about what they've done, but also that um, they've made a very questionable change to their team. Now, um, of course, Noy and it being from Brazil, I can only imagine that um, he's more interested in maintaining, let's just say, Sassy Pancada on that team, right? I imagine that, you know, he would more likely call a move absurd by the Sentinels camp if it was, let's just say, the removal of one of the Brazilian players as opposed to the removal of one of the other players on their roster. Maybe not, right? Maybe they've made another change, but it's definitely interesting. And he closes out with this tweet, I can't say because it was the team's strategic decision and that could put them at a disadvantage in Saturday's game. So saying there's a big bomb coming up here, what are Sentinels playing at? They've made a very questionable change, an absurd change. You can see the original Portuguese here, which uh, is pretty clear what that means. So what exactly does this refer to, right? Because people were looking at this and thinking, okay, maybe it's a follow-on of what's happened with the Pancada situation before, where we believe Pancada was maybe changing roles. And then Zekin goes on to say, we cut Pancada, cry about it. So this, of course, sounds like he's not being serious, right? We cut Pancada, cry about it, right? It just implies that, oh, yeah, you know, there's nothing happening here, no changes being made. However, it must be said, was it not Zekin or was it somebody else that just leaked the entire NRG team in the offseason? Was there something like that where Zekin was on Sentinels and then um, someone asked him, like, five gifted for the entire NRG team and he just leaked the entire NRG team on stream? And people thought he was joking because, like, why would he leak the entire thing? But he was actually being straight up and it was the team that they eventually confirmed. So I don't know if that's just, like, Zekin's way of doing it here, whether they actually have got rid of Pancada. Nothing really from his side yet. Or maybe there's something else going on. Some have rumored, okay, is Def going to go? Is Marv coming in? Like, what's the plan here? But um, I don't know if Marv is actually going to be out there in LA anyway for this game. So maybe there's nothing going on at all. But enjoy your thoughts in the comments below because there's definitely an interesting chain of events and tweets going on there. We've got to talk about some matches, though, that are going on, not just in the Challenger side, but also in the Pro Worlds. Coming up very shortly, we did have some information from Fnatic that, again, Alpha's visa is not ideal and that they've been delayed on this again. I mean, they confirmed the other day that it was going to be fine, that they were going to be there in time for the game against BBL today, but that's no longer the case. So, yes, yeah, still running into some issues with his visa, and um, they believe they're going to try and get him back as soon as possible. But of course, Carrick did a great job for them. The first game they played, so, um, you know, for the near future, he's obviously going to be a valid option, but not ideal at all for Alpha. Now, we've got to discuss challenges, man. What a day for G2. You've got to respect the run they made. Shazam had a crucial 3k here with the sofa as well. If he doesn't win this round for his team, then they go down massively on the map three ascent to Oxygen. They eventually come back and win that game though to go on and face the guards. It was definitely a weird game in a way like Oxygen's ability on the defense seemed at times non-existent but um, you know G2 got the job done in three. It was 13-9 Oxygen game one, 13-4 back to G2 and then 13-11 with all those attacking rounds at the end of that half. So could have been a very different story there but um, you know Shazam I think was critical in getting it well at one of those rounds one but also Oxy as expected was a revelation. But then it was the series that I certainly expected the guard to get the job done. To me, ranking the teams in North America, I would have probably said that there's a good chance of it being the guard, M80, and G2 being the top three. And that's what we have this tournament. But in fact, there might be a different team in the kind of top two conversation with G2 taking down the guard. They won game one, the guard bounced back on game two. And then game three, though, went all the way to the final round with G2 taking the W. So this was super impressive, I thought, for G2 to actually make this run all the way through the losers brackets and uh, yeah the guards did not play to the level that I expected of them I'm sure they'll be frustrated here with their performance losing in the way they did to M80 on the verge of victory there and then they of course ended up losing that series and then going down to G2 in the manner they did they'll be frustrated the guard of course there's other things for them to be frustrated about the organization itself is pretty much collapsing around them but um you know maybe there was still hope for these guys to try and win ascension regardless but this is quite the setback for them it's not a massive deal of course it's just a mid season tourney doesn't mean that much in the grand scheme of things but um yeah it does go to show that the guards are more vulnerable than at times they appeared and that uh, g2 did a phenomenal job in this series as shazam says one two one versus the guard into the finals of the mid-season invitational gg to them super exhausted games are crazy they were both three mappers they went the distance and um yes yeah, tech says disappointing for us learned a lot will be back stronger but um yeah this was the overall result so great stuff from g2 split went their way 13 15 in the end of ridiculous overtime you can understand why Shazam's rather tired as a result then 13-8 back
back to the guard on Haven, but then 13-11 the other way on Ascent. There was a few rounds in a row that the guard won. A little like they were making a big comeback after a tricky first half, but G2 clutched up in the ends. They advanced through, and again, a nice little piece of juicy drama here between M80 and the guards, where the M80 say, oh yeah, peace out to the guards. You guys are out of there, and the guard like rent free. But uh, And then they quote tweet this one, where they say, keep the same energy when we meet again. And uh, well, it hasn't happened yet. They will play again at some point, you would imagine, going forwards, potentially even when it comes to the North American playoffs in a few months' time, when it comes to determining which teams get to try and qualify for Ascension. But uh, for now, M80 maintain the upper hand. So this is the bracket as it's concluded. We have one more game tonight to determine the champion, M80 or G2. M80 have still got to be the favourites here, but G2 have won four series in a row in losers, and thankfully have finally played teams not in their group, which is a pleasant surprise, I'm sure, for them. So I think I'll take M80 2-1 tonight, but still, could be a very different story. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, take care, and I'll see you next time.